Hi everyone, welcome back to Grounded Haven Homestead. Today I am going to be giving you the very first garden tour of 2022. I'm going to be showing you our vegetable garden. If you're new around here, my name is Michelle and we are located in Central Virginia Zone 7A. Right now it's the beginning of April and our estimated first frost date is the middle of April. So we're still a few weeks away from planting a lot of our summer and warm weather things like tomatoes and peppers, but I still wanted to give you a garden tour because there is actually a lot of stuff in the garden right now, even though it's still very early in the season. All the stuff that I have right now are cold hardy things, so I'm gonna show you what I have and maybe run through some of the plans that I have for my beds for the summer as well. So here's a quick overview of our garden. In this front area, you can see we have our raised beds along with some trellises on the side here. We've got our green stock in the middle and then all in the back over there we have a bunch of in-ground beds as well. And then we also have our chickens back there. Some of them are laying eggs right now so they might be a little loud. Oh, there goes our rooster. So I'm going to start in this bed over here. In this bed, the right side is empty for right now. And on the left side, I have a bunch of tulips that I planted cut flower garden style. So they're very close together. And when I want to harvest them for bouquets, I just pull up the entire plant, which I'm actually going to be doing soon with these ones. This is like a good time to be picking tulips for cut flowers. And all of these white ones are starting to bloom. I already picked a few the other day for a bouquet. And it looks like also the I believe the rest of these are like red or colorful varieties and they are starting to bud up as well so soon we're gonna have lots of tulips for bouquets this bed eventually is going to be one of my beds for tomatoes pretty much all determinate tomatoes since I don't have trellising in this bed here in this next bed I recently transplanted a lot of these things in a video so this half of the bed is all bok choy and it's been growing really nicely since I last transplanted it Everything's getting really nice and lush and green. And then here is a bunch of kale that I also transplanted that day and it's been growing really nicely. When I popped these in, the plants were pretty small because they are very densely planted as you can see, but they've already grown quite a bit. So I think I'll get a nice batch of baby greens from this in just a few weeks. I'm starting to see a little bit of slug damage, all of these little holes in here in these leaves which is pretty typical. We do have a lot of slugs here and especially around this time of year as well since it is spring and it is raining a lot. So pretty soon I'm gonna come out here and do some beer traps for slugs, which I have found to be helpful at least as like a short-term solution. It might get not get all of our slugs, but it does help to diminish the population a little bit. So I'm gonna be doing that to minimize any damage to this bok choy. In this next bed, this is where I transplanted my shallots in most of the bed over here. And then I did have some extra space on the right side, so I did plant some onions in there as well. After I transplanted those, maybe like one or two weeks after, we did have a super cold night. I think it got down to like 19 degrees. And a lot of the tops of these onions died back and I was pretty worried for a second. I wasn't sure if they were gonna make it. You can see here is like where one of those leaves died, but Onion plants are very hardy and shallots as well. And you can see they've started to grow back and they're looking much better. Last week you could barely see anything here so I'm glad it looks like they're going to come back. You might also be able to see that in between some of these rows I did go in and sow some radish seeds just because those will grow so quickly and they won't take up a lot of space. So I just wanted to maximize my space a little bit and I just planted those in between the shallot and onion rows. I also have one sorrel plant back here. This is a red vein sorrel, very pretty and very cold hardy. It's a perennial that looks good almost all year round. It's a really good one to add to your garden if you don't have it. The next bed has one of my areas of garlic. We have our chestnut red hardneck garlic here. These were all planted from garlic cloves that we harvested from our own crop and saved. And they're looking so nice. The stalks are very thick. These are definitely our most vigorous garlic plants that we have in the garden right now. And pretty soon they should be sending up a garlic scape that we can harvest since these are hardneck garlics. 
And if you notice this crazy contraption of steaks here, it's because I did have some deer come and nibble on my garlic either in the fall or winter, which is not really common because garlic is not something that deer really like to eat, but they've been very voracious this past fall and winter. So I just put these steaks up to kind of discourage them. Here's another view of those. And then I have a couple of other garlic cloves. I think these are soft neck garlic. That I didn't have space for in my other bed so I threw them in here. You can see that they're a little bit smaller than the hard neck garlic on the other side of the bed. So that was all of the beds on the left side. Let me move on to the right side now. This first bed here is going to be for our peppers which have not gone in yet because it's still too early. And since I knew that those weren't going to be going in for a while, I did sow some radishes and carrots right down the middle of the row. You can see that a lot of those radishes have come up but a lot of them did die. I think it was a little bit too cold for them when it got down to 19 degrees, so these ones died. These ones kind of hung on, but I think they are getting attacked by slugs. So I'm gonna have to do a beer trap in this bed as well. And then the carrots next to those have all just started to germinate. They take a little bit longer to germinate, which is actually good because they didn't come up before that really hard frost. So those were just fine and they're gonna start to grow really nicely now. And I did so pretty thickly. You can see a lot of little seedlings there, so I'm gonna have to come in and thin those later on. I also have a couple of leeks in this bed. These were overwintered from the fall, and they're really starting to grow a lot. This one in particular is getting really thick. So we're gonna have some nice spring leeks from these. I'm really glad that they overwintered because I wasn't completely sure if they would do that in our zone. In this next bed, I also transplanted all of these in a video. I have some kale here as well as some lettuce. They have a little bit of frost damage, but overall the plants are looking pretty good. You can see all of like the center growth here is looking really nice. So once it gets just a little bit warmer consistently, I think we're going to have some pretty good lettuce harvests. And here's a look at the kale. Again, a little bit of cold damage on these outer leaves, but the inner leaves look much better. And then here I also have some more overwintered leeks. This one's looking pretty good. And then we have some smaller ones here as well. The next bed is where I planted my leeks. And those go all the way from the end of the bed up to about here. So almost the whole bed is leeks. And when I planted these, they had some pretty deep holes and you can see they've already started to fill in with any rain that we've gotten. They've filled in those holes a little bit, but you can also see that those leeks have grown up. They still look really small, but they're definitely bigger than when I transplanted them in there. And now, even though the hole has filled in, the leeks are growing upwards and are still sticking out of the soil, which is really good. I've got another little sorrel plant here and it's looking really nice now that the weather is warming up again. At the end of this bed, I had planted some herbs. So I think these are cilantro. I have some dill coming up over here. And in this little area, I did plant chamomile, although I don't see anything coming up. The seeds might have been a little old, so I'm not sure if those will come up, but we'll see. And in this last bed, it's mostly empty, but I just have a few things that have overwintered. Some of the things that I had in here did die over the winter, but I do have one surviving Brussels sprouts plant. I haven't harvested anything from this yet, but I'm hoping that I will be able to get something this spring. You might be able to see these little baby Brussels sprouts. They're not very tight. They, I'm worried that they're going to bolt, but I'm just leaving it here to see if we can get anything. Here you can see some more little baby Brussels sprouts forming in the little nooks of the plant. This is my only Brussels sprout plant that survived the fall and I was planning on harvesting it in like late fall or early winter. They just didn't grow fast enough for me to do that so I'm hoping that this will hold on and maybe I can get like a late spring harvest. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm not sure if these will bulb up, but we'll see. And then I have some kale plants that also overwintered. This is looking really nice. I can probably start harvesting from this soon. In the smaller beds that we have in the middle of our raised bed garden, we have some perennial plants. So each of these beds has two blueberry bushes and they're also surrounded with strawberries. The blueberries are just starting to bud up. 
I'm hoping that we get some blueberries this year. Last year we had a few, but they were really tiny and the birds did eat a lot of them. The strawberries are also looking really good. And I also have this like oregano plant that has kind of taken over as well, but I don't mind. It kind of just acts like a ground cover. Here's a quick look at our green stock. I did show what's in here the other day, but just in case you didn't watch that video, it was our seedling update video. I have two tiers of strawberries here for a total of 12 plants. And I did have some tot soy in this row, but I had harvested them all for a noodle dish. I have some kale here that has some cold damage, but I think it will come back. This one's looking a little bit better. All around this row, I have romaine lettuce. And then at the very bottom, I have just sowed some radishes. I did like three or four in each of these. So we'll see how those do. And then here's a look at that other bed with two more blueberry bushes. This one's a little bit older, so this is probably our biggest one. Those buds are just starting to open up. And then those strawberry plants again are looking really nice. No flowers yet though. And then lastly for our raised bed garden, we have these two trellis areas on the side and I planted some peas along here. They've come up really nicely, but they're not quite large enough to climb yet. I had sugar snap peas here that didn't germinate very well. Um, and the rest of these are snow peas and those did really well. I also did a line of radishes up here where you can see a little bit of slug damage or cold damage. Um, I might just come in with another line of radishes, especially since these peas didn't come up. I can just sow this all with radishes before I plant something in the summer to take the place of these peas once they kind of peter out. Nothing's really going on on the other trellis right now. I do have some perennials in this area. I have two hyssop plants right there and then I have my garlic chives there which are coming up nicely. All these jugs here are my winter sowed seeds but I haven't seen any growth off of these yet. I'm kind of disappointed. I don't know if I just have to be a little bit more patient but I feel like this time last year I did see a little bit of action and there's just nothing going on in there yet so I don't know I'll just leave these here hopefully they do something but I did start some backup seeds for some of these things like I have my backup artichoke and rhubarb and I did also plant some milkweed because if this doesn't grow I definitely want to have some milkweed plants in our garden for the monarch butterflies. So I did start just a few of these in cells. So that's it for the raised bed garden. Now I'm going to move on to the back, which is all in ground beds. A lot of these are empty, but we do have some of them that have plants in them. So I'll show you those. This first row here is empty. And then the next row I just planted up. I amended with some composted manure. And then I have seven hybrid broccoli plants in here. And if you watched that seedling update that I showed you, those tiny little broccoli and cauliflower starts that I started back in like February, they were so puny. And these ones are much bigger and healthier looking than those ones were. So I'm really happy that I started these backups and they're doing really well after transplanting. So hopefully we'll get something from these. So I guess no cauliflower this spring, which is kind of sad, but I'll have to try that in the fall. I also came in and sowed a few lines of radishes around these broccolis just because those are a quick crop. And again, I'm just always planting radishes everywhere in the garden around these plants that take a little bit longer to be ready to harvest just because I have all this space in this bed that can still be used to grow food while those are growing and developing a lot of their leafy growth. I normally have a lot of these beds covered. I have some wire here. I think this is like eight gauge wire. I'll have to look it up. Um, but I just got a big roll of these and we've been using them for our row covers. And then I have frost fabric here. This is a little bit for frost protection, but it's mostly just to protect my seedlings from deer. Because like I said, they have been coming through a lot this past winter. Um, and even if I don't have plants, they do walk all over my beds, which I don't like. So I usually keep these all covered. In the next bed, we have some good stuff going in here. In this area, we have spinach, which I've been harvesting from all winter. And it does look a little bit sparse because we just came in yesterday and I harvested a big bowl. Somehow every time I come out to film this spinach bed, it's like right after we've harvested from it. So it does look a little bit empty, but we've been getting so much food off of these plants. I'm really impressed. This is the best we have grown spinach so far. 
I think I've probably harvested from these plants like five to six times over the course of the winter. And they're just looking really good. No signs of bolting at all yet. And then in the other part of this bed, we have more garlic. I have a few different varieties here. These ones on the end are actually an experiment. I bought some garlic from the supermarket, just organic garlic, and I planted it and those came up really well. I think I have one line of music hard neck garlic. And then the rest of these are all California soft neck from a local nursery, but a lot of the garlic actually looked pretty shriveled up. So you might notice I have a lot of like empty patches where some of those cloves didn't grow. So anywhere where the garlic didn't grow, I went in with some root vegetables. You can see here some carrot seedlings starting to germinate. I also did some golden beets and I probably also threw radishes in there somewhere. So that way all of these empty spaces are not being wasted. And last year I think we harvested our garlic in June or July. So then after we pull these, we still have time for another thing to plant in this bed for the rest of the season. These next two beds are empty. I don't remember what I'm gonna plant here. On this trellis, I think I'm gonna do cucumbers and maybe some of my like Asian gourds and melons. And then this last bed here is where I planted hundreds of different onions. I believe I have three varieties in this row. Um, I have a few Cortland, then I have a Cabernet red onion here, and then at the end we have Australian brown onions. So here's a little close up on those. Again, they do still look a little bit small right now, but I think they're still kind of like in their settling in process from being transplanted. And before you know it, they'll grow really big. And then I did the same thing in this bed where I planted radishes in between some of my onion rows. So those are coming up now. So that's everything on the right side of our pathway. On the left here, we have our asparagus bed. I haven't seen any growth from that. Oh, actually, ooh, this is the first asparagus spear that I found this year. <gasps> So we're gonna be harvesting asparagus here really soon. Okay, I'm just noticing now. Here are some more. Oh, that's so exciting. They look purple, but this is a green asparagus. You can see all the leftover spears from last year here. Ooh, that's so exciting. I just came out here like two days ago and didn't see anything, so really cool. Last fall when I was dividing up my strawberry bed, I had a bunch of extra like runners and things. So I transplanted a lot of these all along this asparagus bed on the side. But then I found out that the deer really like to eat strawberry leaves. So I have had to add this like temporary fencing here to keep them off of the strawberries. They did come in two weeks ago and eat off all the tops, but the strawberries are bouncing back really well. So hopefully we'll get a little bonus harvest of strawberries from this area. Um, we do have a pretty nice strawberry patch in front of our greenhouse, which I will show you later on. This row was a little bit of a mess last year. I did some indeterminate tomatoes, but we've grown tomatoes here for a few years and I think that there were some like diseases in the soil. And we also had some quack grass take over like the back part of the bed. So what we're gonna do, I think, is take out these posts and completely tarp over from the pathway and cover up this bed. And then this mess of an area over here has been tarped for about a year and I'm going to lift this up soon and I think this is going to be my zucchini bed this year. We'll see how it looks under there because we did have some pretty bad weeds in this bed but I'm hopeful that after a year of covering it up all the weeds will be gone or at least easier to manage. So that is pretty much it for our vegetable garden areas, but since it's kind of emptier this time of year, and I think I'll have time in this video without it being like an hour long, I'm gonna show you some other things that are going on around our property. For example, right behind me here, we have one of our peach trees that is in full bloom right now, and it is so beautiful and gorgeous. It also smells amazing. I can smell that like beautiful floral fragrance just standing here right now and the honeybees are also loving it. So let me show you those real quick. It smells so good right now. I don't know if you can tell or hear, but there are bees buzzing all around these flowers. It's kind of an overcast day, but on a sunny day, there are even more bees out here. So last year, this tree did flower like this and did start to develop 
some little baby peaches, but when they were still green, they all fell off. And I think maybe we had some sort of bug issue. So if you can see that little green thing over there, I actually bought a pheromone trap online that's supposed to trap peach vine borers. I'm not 100% sure if that was the issue we had, but I thought I would give it a try because with the way this tree is blooming this year, it does look like we're going to get some peaches developing and I really want it to form into actual peaches this year. That would be so nice. But anyway, even if we don't get fruit, it is really gorgeous to look at this time of year. It seriously smells so good. I just love coming out here to look at this peach tree. Here's an area that I planted up in a video in the fall. We have a fig tree that we transplanted here last year, so it's still kind of small right now, and I'm hoping that it grows really nice and big this year. But I planted a whole bunch of bulbs around here. I think I ended up planting like a hundred, if not more, different kinds of bulbs here. And a lot of them are coming up now, so I thought I would just give you guys a little update in case you watch that video and want to see how things are doing. So I have a couple of areas over here. I think these are daffodils, which are all going to start blooming soon. This middle area, I have irises, I believe. Looks like someone's been digging around in there. And then here we have crocuses, which have been blooming their heads off the past couple of weeks. They're looking a little bit sad right now, but they have been so beautiful. I really love these pure white ones, which tend to be a lot taller than the short ones, which is really cool. We can see them all the way from our kitchen window. And then here we have some Ascari starting to come up and bloom. Such a weird, cute little plant. Got purple ones and then also white ones here, which I don't think I have a lot of white ones in the garden, so these are pretty cool. Most of the ones I've seen around are the purple ones. They kind of look like grapes. So it's kind of nice starting to see this new space fill out a little bit. We've also got a row here of some berries, raspberries and blackberries. Here is one of the raspberry plants that is starting to come alive again and leaf out. This one I believe is a yellow raspberry. We didn't get anything last year, so I really hope we get some berries this year. Then we have a blackberry plant here. This one I transplanted last fall. We actually got this plant on sale at the end of the fall season at like Home Depot. And I think we got it for like $3.50, which is such a good deal and it's looking really good. It looked good pretty much all winter too, which is pretty cool. And now it's starting to get some new leaves. So yeah, we've got a few of those over there. And then here's a little look at one of our apple trees starting to get some leaves as well. And these look like they're all going to be flowers, which is really exciting. Here's a little look at this cluster. You can see that pink color. That's where the flowers are going to be. So if there are flowers, hopefully that means that we have apples this year again. We did prune this tree pretty hard, so I got a little scared for a second that I pruned too much but it does look like we have plenty of flowers forming on there, so I think we're gonna be okay. And lastly, here's a look at our two strawberry beds that we have in front of our greenhouse. These two beds are the only strawberries that we had last year, and at the height of the season, we had probably like a quart of strawberries a day. So even this small space gave us plenty of fruit, Last fall, the plants were pretty crowded, so I went in and pulled up everything and gave the bed a good weeding, and I divided up all of the plants and spaced them out a little bit better. So this year they do look a little bit more sparse, but I think it will be better for the plants overall to have more space. Strawberries in our zone pretty much look good year round. They are almost like an evergreen, and I am starting to see some of them put on some flowers. So we should be having strawberries pretty soon. I think last year we harvested a lot of ours in May and June, so we still have a little bit to go, but it is looking really promising with all of these flowers and new growth starting to come up. I hope you guys enjoyed the first garden tour of 2022. 
I'm gonna have a lot more garden tours coming to you this year, so please make sure you're subscribed to see more of that. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video. And then I did this on the left here to eat planted most a little bit of a mess.